Hello there, thanks a lot for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard, and welcome to part one of this two-part video blog. I hope you'll be able to catch part two where I show you nine other examples of this tour blank in use. I go through them quickly and it's really entertaining. And today it's the original Jimi Hendrix experience with Noel Redding and Mitch Mitchell only a month before their final shows together. This is the spring 1969 tour of America, and it is a tour blank, you know, as I've explained so many times before in my video blogs. The color portion on this poster was the permanent one used for every show, and then the information down below would be printed in in small quantities day by day, depending on what city and date that show is taking place. And remarkably, the amazing thing is this is the only Hendrix American tour blank when you start his debut in America at the Monterey Pop Festival up till this moment, almost two years later, every Hendrix concert poster in America was a creation by the local promoter and his graphic artist. So, you know, there just wasn't any tour blanks used. You had lots of local creations, and that's just amazing. So you had this real wide variety of Hendrix one-off concert posters ranging from bad to good to great, both psychedelic and boxing style. And of course, a poster was not created for every show, just when the promoter wanted to. Now, over in Europe, there was only one ever created as well, and that one you're super familiar with. We're talking about January of 69 and over in Germany. And yes, this is the famous Gunther Kieser German concert poster tour blank for something like eight shows or so, and I have video blogged that one separately. It's just so efficient to create, you know, a, a tour blank to put a lot of time and effort into the design of a poster and then use it multiple times. And of course, in the age before the internet, nobody really, in most cities, you know, the fans and stuff wouldn't know the image was being used across America. They would just see it in their hometown. So from this May 69 tour, it's really fun. I've got 10 examples to show you. <laughs> Nine by photograph and then this one, the real McCoy, which I've clipped to a board here. It's 14 by 22 inch on cardstock, and it's a little bit, you know, flexible and was rolled a little bit, so I do have it clipped on the board so it's totally flat for you. And the graphic artist, man of the hour, is David Bird, and uh, he's the one who designed it, and you've certainly seen some of his other artwork. Um, I'll show you one now, but first I want you to notice on this Hendrix poster where my finger is on both sides, you know, notice the um, naked women on both sides with long, flowing blonde hair, okay? Well, Bird did this the same year for the Stones. And sure, you've seen this, the venue box is blank, but, you know, once again, you've got the um, naked woman with the flowing long hair and lots of blues and oranges on this as well. And Bird also did the original Woodstock concert poster when it had its original location of Wallkill, New York. Yes, indeed, he did this, and the naked lady theme continues, a different naked woman in this case. And then you've got this famous Hendrix concert poster done by Bird, very familiar image from Bill Graham's Fillmore East, and that may be Bird's most popular enduring concert poster image ever. And as long as we're talking about the graphic artist man of the hour, let's give him a little love for just a second and show you. There he is, Mr. David Bird, holding some other kind of artwork. Looks like a pretty nice fellow. So, with this, I like to say it's Bird's very, you know, Aquarian design, and there's no photographs on it, just like there weren't on his others, but what he chose to do here was, as you can see, graphic renditions of the three experienced members. You've got Jimmy on top, drummer Mitch Mitchell down to the left, and bassist Noel Redding down to the right there. And uh, Mitch is wearing a hat, but I, I find it interesting how both Jimmy's and Noel's afros sort of dissolve into white right above their hairline. Interesting artistic touch. And it's a very symmetrical design with lots of stars and a couple of moons and autumn colors. Another thing I find interesting and a little bit odd is right here by my finger is Bird's credit on the poster and it's just stamped in with four block letters. Um, by stamped in, of course, I mean on the poster master, but it's almost like, just guessing your bird likes, forgot to sign the artwork or something, and then at the printer they said, well, whoops, I just lost a paper clip. They said, well, we really should, you know, give him credit on the poster, and so they just sort of threw his name in here. I don't know if that's how it worked, but that's just, uh, you know, an educated guess. 
So that's the permanent color portion and then you get down to the venue box down below and there you have it different for every show and not just the date and city but the opening acts and ticket prices could vary, would vary slightly as well. But unlike some other tour blanks I've done for you, it's uh, all this you know font and type size and everything is remarkably consistent throughout the entire tour, which definitely signals to us that the same printer in some national location did all the printing, and you'll see that in just a moment. So you do have Maple Leaf Gardens here, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and they actually made two different concert posters for this show, and I've video blogged the other. The other one was turned out, I'll show you real quickly to remind you, by Chum Radio, the FM rock station there in Toronto, and they turned out this lovely paper poster as well. But you know, this was not just advertising, this was also promotion and maybe even merch, I think. Whereas this poster, strictly an advertising poster, so who knows how few were actually stamped with the Toronto, you know, the May 3rd date in there. Um, heck, it could be as few as 50 and as many as 200, maybe even a little more or less than that, little as 25, as many as 250 or something, I don't know. But the 50 to 200 guess is usually pretty accurate with these tour blanks. So, because of all that fine print, let's move in for even a closer look. Now, the first two lines stamped in here for Toronto were used pretty consistently throughout most of the other posters. Also, Noel Redding, who, uh, of course, the experienced bass player, kind of awkwardly breaking away as a solo act with his band Fat Mattress, but for this tour, he was referred to as just by his name. You know, he was just getting kind of weary of Jimmy's flakiness and showing up for recording sessions and then having so little of a say in the proceedings when he did show up. So Noel's last ever recording session with Jimmy had been the previous month and his last ever stage performance with Jimmy would be the following month. Then it says Cora Promotions Presents. That's on all the posters, although once or twice co-promoting. Maple Leaf Gardens, the huge famous venue in Toronto. Saturday, May 3rd, at 8 p.m., one show only. And good thing only one show was scheduled because Jimmy spent most of this day in jail due to a drug bust at the Toronto airport this morning. So I cover that a lot in my video blog of the other colorful chum poster. Tickets, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, and five and a half dollars. And that top ticket price would vary at times on the other posters. And then you've got the really fine print down there. Tickets at Maple Leaf Gardens, with the address given, and all ticket agencies. For information, call, with the phone number given. And then the last line of standard mail order information. Ah, but wait now, you do have a couple of tiny things in the, way down in the corners. In the extreme lower left margin down there, Chum Presentation. <laughs> Again, the Toronto FM album rock station, could they possibly have buried that any more on this poster? Oh my gosh. And did it have anything to do maybe with jealousy over Chum's own great looking poster for this event? I don't know. And then in the uh, extreme lower right margin, you do have printed in the USA. Well, that was a necessity for American made posters to be um, able to get through Canadian customs for Canadian shows. So it's not on any of the other American posters I show you, just this one and Vancouver, British Columbia. Okay, so that concludes part one with the Toronto poster. Why don't you jump over to part two and I'll do a quick run through of those nine other posters using the same tour blank and it's kind of fun and interesting to see the differences. So including, by the way, the poster from the night before and the night right after this Toronto show. So uh, thanks, we'll see you over there in a second.